100 miles west of Bangkok in Thailand is the tourist mecca known as Tiger Temple. The Buddhist monastery, which bills itself as a tiger sanctuary, has long been suspected of involvement in the illegal live tiger trade and the illicit trafficking in tiger skins and other parts such as teeth and bones believed to have medicinal qualities in some parts or considered status symbols in nations like China. The monastery may have unsuccessfully sued conservation groups for defamation in 2009, but couldn't prevent a raid by the Thai government in early February. The raid resulted in the seizure of 100 tigers and numerous rare birds. The temple known as Wat Pu Luang, Tabua to locals, claims to get the tigers as rescues from poachers, but conservationists believe the tigers are actively bred and then treated inhumanely to make them docile around tourists. As the program manager for Southeast Asia at Traffic, a joint program of the World Wildlife Foundation and the World Conservation Union, Kanitha Krishnasamy said, We hope the investigations don't end with the seizure of wildlife, but result in legal action and a deterrent punishment for offenders. Protestantism in the United States is said to be in steep decline, with its membership aging and not being replaced by enough younger newcomers to break even or grow. As this happens, further schisms in these churches also occur as the old established central church either changes too quickly or too slowly to retain the loyalty of local institutions. In the case of the Diocese of the Episcopal Church in South Carolina, the central church was changing too quickly. At first, it was ordaining women as priests and then bishops. Later on, it started granting the same status to gays and lesbians. So in 2012, the diocese voted to split off. Although one might be tempted to believe that the separation process would be a simple process and that things would be settled right then and there. However, it didn't take long before the central church came to the realization that the real estate owned by the diocese was worth $500 million. The dispute over this property has been in courts ever since. While the split over various congregations' beliefs is no doubt important to all involved, there must certainly be a significant concern about the value of all property. Behind the scenes, churches operate much like any business, but without the need to pay most taxes that a business would have to pay. The value of real property plays a part in each organization's ability to fund its operations. Churches built at times of much lower real estate prices, but with much larger memberships, are sitting on holdings that they could never hope to duplicate today. From the court's point of view, the law has no interest in the differences of opinion within any church about matters of religious doctrine, but is always going to settle the matter as with any other type of separation. Namely, what do the contracts say? Who has been paying for upkeep of the buildings? And so on. With those matters in mind, it is hardly surprising that the local diocese are going to prevail in keeping property that has always been under their control. If memberships continue to decline, however, we may see some of the properties sold off to pay expenses of keeping others in operation. After all, it's just good business. 51-year-old Argentinian lawyer Alberto Nisman was laid to rest recently after being found dead with a gunshot wound to the head. The official autopsy report stated that the wound was self-inflicted, but many remained skeptical given that he was only one day away from testifying before Congress about his findings regarding a 1994 bombing of a Jewish community center that resulted in the deaths of 85 people. Furthermore, the question of suicide can be considered settled as there was no powder on Nisman's hands. Meanwhile, the survivors of the 1994 bombing, as well as families of the dead, are beginning to lose hope that justice will ever be served as this is just one of many such acts of violence, suicide, or unfortunate accidents that seem to prevent any kind of resolution to the 20-year-old mystery. Suspicion had centered on several Iranian officials, but after they were found not guilty, a new investigation was launched in 2005. The claim has been made that the current Argentine move government is protecting this group in exchange for lucrative trade agreements with Iran. 
The new lead prosecutor has vowed to push the case forward and says that she won't rule any possibilities out, especially since Nisman had accused the government of President Cristina Fernandez of interference in the investigation only a month ago. Protesters have been appearing at the side of the community center with signs reading justice and we are all victims. Mourners lined the streets as well, throwing roses as a long motorcade took Nisman, a 51-year-old father of two, to a Jewish cemetery in Buenos Aires.